Welcome to the New York State Museum. My name's Kat Morehouse and I'm an instructor here. And today we're going on a virtual field trip. We're gonna be learning about Adirondack animals. And if you guys have any questions or wanna participate, just use the comment box below. Now our first animal of the day is really special. This animal is our state mammal. It's the largest rodent in the US and they are world renowned engineers. Any guesses? Beavers, yes, you got it, the beaver. Now beavers like to live in areas with fresh water. So streams and ponds and lakes. They also like to live near woodland areas, which makes the Adirondacks the perfect environment for these furry friends. Now, as I said, beavers are great engineers and builders can do is change their entire environment, creating a new ecosystem by building dams. When they build their dams, they can stop the flow of water, which creates a pond and a habitat for other animals to enjoy. Now beavers inside of these ponds will make their homes. Their homes are called lodges, and they'll use stones and branches and mud to make those houses. Their houses will have thick walls and different rooms, including a, a room to store food for the winter. Inside of the lodges, you might find a mama beaver with her babies, which are called kits. It's the safest place for them to be when they're still really young. Now, beavers are considered semi-aquatic animals. They spend a lot of time in the water and they have some awesome adaptations that will help them with that. If we look closely, we can see the beaver's back feet are webbed and can act like fins when it, they're swimming. They have a long, broad tail that acts like a paddle or a rudder, a rudder when they're swimming and can help them steer. Now, beavers don't have very good eyesight but they do have transparent eyelids, which kind of work like goggles and allow the beavers to see underwater, which is pretty cool. One of the other things that beavers will do is they will oil their fur as a social activity. So they don't need their bathing suits because they're already waterproof. Now beavers have some adaptations that help them with building too. They have five fingered little hands that can help them hold on to twigs and branches when they're dragging those over. Now we can see beavers have some really good skills as lumberjacks. And how do they cut down those trees? They use their teeth. Beavers have really big incisors. Their incisors actually don't stop growing. And as you can see, they're kind of reddish or orange in color, not white like our teeth. And the reason that is, is because beavers have higher levels of iron in their teeth that make them super strong. Beavers are nocturnal creatures, which means they spend a lot of their time awake at night and they'll use their good sense of hearing to keep an ear out if any predators are coming their way. Now beavers might be fast swimmers, but they're kind of awkward and clumsy on land. So they'll build canal ways to make sure they are never far away from a water source so they can get back to their lodges as fast as possible. Beavers being social animals will warn their friends if they think that there might be danger coming up near them, they'll warn their family by hissing or slapping that tail down. Any questions about the beavers? All right, are we ready to meet the next furry friend? Great, let's go. My next furry friend in the Adirondacks has short stubby legs, a little tail, thick black fur, big teeth and claws. Any guesses? Oh, it's the bear. Now black bears can be found coast to coast in the United States. And that's because 
they are able to eat a really big variety of foods. Black bears are usually solitary creatures. The only time we really see them in big groups is with a mama and her cubs. Can we see how many cubs this mama bear has? Two cubs, that's right, that's right, it has two cubs. Now black bears can be found in the Adirondacks and they are really big opportunistic eaters. So they will eat things like plants, we have seeds, cherry pits, they'll also eat fish, insects, roots, and small mammals. Some black bears in the Adirondacks have even been known to eat bird feet out of bird feeders or get into some garbage. Do you guys think trash is a good snack for a black bear? No. So we have to do our part in keeping the bears safe. We have to make sure if we're out camping in the Adirondacks that we bring all of our trash out with us and that we keep it closed in a safe container far away from our campsite. We want to make sure that they're not getting into anything that could make them sick. Now, black bears kind of wander into campsites sometimes if they smell things, and that's because bears have a great sense of smell. Their noses are 200 times more powerful than ours. They can smell better than a dog and can smell things from over a mile away, which is pretty cool. We actually do have a question. What should we do if we see a bear when we're on a hike? If you see a black bear when you're on a hike, you don't want to run away. You can make noise and back away slowly as a group. If you see a black bear, you should also call the DEC because they want to make sure that the black bears are keeping a safe distance and that they're warning people if there are black bears in that area. We definitely want to make sure that we are not close to them at any time especially because if a mama bear has her cubs with her or if a bear is defending their food source, they can become aggressive. They have very sharp claws, very sharp teeth, and will use their size and power to defend their cubs or defend their food source. What a great question. We have another question, if that's okay. Absolutely. Do black bears have black skin or just black fur? Ooh. They have black fur, and you know what's funny about black bears? You can see this fur is really dark, but if you look at the bears over there, they're kind of a more brown color. And if you find black bears in the west coast of this country, they'll come in different colors, even a light cinnamon uh, or like a blonde color. So black bears, even though they're called black bears, have a variety of different fur colors. Great question. Now, one of my favorite myths about bears is that they like honey. Who here has heard of Winnie the Pooh? So, black bears don't actually love honey that much, but we will see them go into bees' nests and wasps' nests like this. And what they're going after isn't the honey, but these right here. Black bears love to eat things like eggs and larvae and pupas of developing bees and hornets. But lucky enough for the bear, they have really thick fur that protects them from stingers. All right. Now, if we look closely at the bear, we can see they have sharp, sharp claws like this. And those sharp claws help them when they're eating too, because they'll open up logs and find grub and little insects inside. They'll also use their sharp teeth for eating when they're trying to dig up roots or when they're scavenging small mammals. Now, bears eat about 85% plant and 15% animal. So because they eat plants and animals, that makes black bears omnivores, like us humans. Any other questions?
questions about bears? All right, let's go meet our last furry friend of the day. Now my last Adirondack animal is our largest land mammal in New York. They stand at about six feet tall and can weigh as much as 1,500 pounds. So it's a pretty big one. Any guesses? It's the largest of the deer species. It's my friend the moose. And the name moose comes from the Algonquin word for twig eater. So just like my beaver, this big guy is an herbivore. He'll eat twigs and shrubs and aquatic plants. Now, to get to those aquatic plants, this friend is a really good swimmer too. And they'll dive down to the bottom of lakes and feast on aquatic plants that are growing. They can also use those long legs and tall stature to get to branches up to 14 feet high in the air. Now, this friend we can see has some really big antlers on the top of his head. And we have a question about how big are the antlers or how big is the biggest, are the biggest antlers? Ooh, so antlers can grow up to six feet wide and weigh up to 70 pounds, which means that this moose has to have really strong neck and shoulder muscles to hold those up. Now, these antlers are a sign that this is a boy or a bull moose. Only the male moose will grow antlers. And every winter, they'll drop off to save energy when food storages are low, when food sources are low. And then every spring, they'll grow back even bigger than before. So that's one cool thing about our moose. Now we had another question just to confirm from AJ, who's eight years old. What do they use their antlers for again? So their antlers are for showing off. They'll use their antlers to let other moose know that they are around and they are available for mating. So that is what they use their antlers for. They're not really used for fighting, but they will kind of have scrummages between two male moose where they will butt heads a little bit. Um, but mostly moose are pretty solitary animals. And we'll see a moose, if they feel threatened, what they'll do most of the time is they'll run away. But if they feel threatened and cornered, they'll charge. And this moose can run up to 35 miles per hour. So we don't want to be in their way either. So if we see a moose, we should get out of their way. We, we do not want to get too close to a moose because they can act erratically and charge. So we want to make sure that we are giving them space. And because they can run so fast and they have such powerful legs, we want to make sure that we're giving them a huge distance. Spotting a moose in the Adirondacks is pretty rare. They're mostly out and about in the fall and they do really well in cold climates in less populated areas. So they don't really want to be that close to us either. Now, a moose has a couple different adaptations to help with its protection. If we see those big ears and those big eyes that the moose have, they're able to move both their eyes and ears independently, and they can hear things that are going on around and behind them. So they're always on the lookout and listening for any predators that might come their way. Now, because the moose is so large, they don't have a ton of predators. Maybe a bear could give them a hard time or a pack of wolves, but their biggest threat comes in a very small, small, little, tiny critter. It's actually parasites that live inside ticks that can cause the most damage to these animals and make them really sick. Now moose, like I said, like to live in cold weather areas and they have a couple cool things to help them with that. Now moose are not able to sweat. So in a hot summer's day in the Adirondacks, they can go swimming. But on a cold winter night, they have hollow hair that helps keep them insulated and warm.
So their hollow hair helps to keep them warm and they'll make sure that they eat as much food as possible in the fall to prepare. They'll drop their antlers to help store energy and they can use their big hooves to move away snow to get to any grasses or shrubs that are buried underneath. We did have a question asking why such a big nose? Such a big nose. So a moose has a really good sense of smell. They have a long kind of funny face. And with that big nose that helps them smell, they also have a fun trick that they can do. When you go swimming, have you ever plugged your nose so that water doesn't get in? Well, a moose can plug its nose without even using its hands. They can close their nostrils when they're down swimming for those aquatic plants. But really, it's there to help them smell what's going on around them. Moose don't actually have great eyesight, so they're relying on their sense of smell and their hearing the most to make sure they know what's going on around them. That's a great question. Any other questions about my friend the moose? We had another question about their eyesight. Mm -hmm. So just asking how good it was. So It's not very good, unfortunately, but luckily it has other senses to help it out. And they do have that cool ability to move their eyes independently so that they can see what's going on around them. And you can see their eyes are kind of to the side of their head, which helps with that as well. Do we have any questions about any of the other furry friends that we met today? We did have a few questions about the beavers. There was a question about the difference between beavers and muskrats. <gasps> oh, that's a really good question. Now, muskrats don't spend time in the water like beavers do. Remember, beavers are semi-aquatic animals. Um, they have different tails, too, which is kind of something that's a signature for the beaver. They're also different sizes. So beavers can grow up to 50 or 60 pounds. So beavers are quite a bit bigger than muskrats. So that's a really good question. Thank you. We also have a question back to the moose. How strong are their hooves? Ooh, very strong. Remember, those, these moose can grow up to 1,500 pounds. So even though they're pretty slender, they are very powerful. And a correction, a question about the wood difference between woodchucks and the beavers. Oh, woodchucks and beavers. So we're looking at the rodent family, right? Which is really cool that you guys are bringing that up. Uh, again, the size is gonna be a difference. But one cool thing that woodchucks and beavers have in common is that when they're building their houses, the beavers build their houses in the middle of a pond and the entryways are underwater and they'll have multiple rooms and multiple escape routes if predators are an issue. Now, similarly, the woodchuck or the groundhog will also build their homes, but they build their homes under the ground. They'll have multiple entryways and multiple rooms that serve similar purposes. So although we find them in different areas, we can find them both in the Adirondacks, and they're both animals that are in New York State, they do act a little bit differently. And again, the sizes are different as well. Great question. And I think you answered Nicole's question about where do beavers live. And Samantha has, actually, I apologize, Jaden asked, how do beavers sharpen their teeth? <gasps> oh, so beavers, actually, because their teeth are growing and growing and growing every day, they're more worried about wearing their teeth down so that they don't grow too long. And they do that by being the natural lumberjacks that they are and chopping down trees. So they'll be using that for their building and to get to the pulpy middle of trees, which is a fun snack for beavers. We have another question what about beavers. What are the beavers predators? So beaver predators can be things like a bear, but fun fact, they build their lodges with such thick walls that a big black bear can actually stand on top of the lodge and it won't cave in. So something like a bear, something like a wolf, um, that, those could be predators for our beavers. Remember, those beavers are using their sense of hearing and they're gonna be working at night and keeping close to the water so that they have a fast escape route to get back to their lodge where they're the safest. Good question. All right, friends. Well, if I didn't answer your question,
question yet, don't worry, because I'm going to be going back into the comments, and if you have any questions later, just write it in the comments below, and I'll be sure to answer them to the best of my abilities. I had so much fun with you today, and we hope to see you again at the museum soon.